Hey everybody, welcome back to Caesar's Smell Engine. All right, everybody, welcome back to Smell Engine Velocity. This is Caesar, your host, and I am back to you, with you with another project. Uh, this particular project is uh, following up with the uh, Ruckus engine replacement, and now we're back into the Zuma. Uh, as a project that we've been wanting to complete for a while, and here it is. And here she is, the Zuma. What? Whoa! Something's missing. What is it, guys? Uh, leave me a comment below to see what's missing on this Zoom. All right, I went ahead and took the liberty of taking the motor out. Here she is. And cleaning her up, taking all the accessories off, the carb, everything that needed to be taken apart, has been taken apart on here. Um, so really I'm at the point where I'm ready to go ahead and uh, take off the head and go ahead and start trying to put all the pieces together. Now, uh, didn't look like this before. It looked much dirtier than this and I spent a lot of time putting engine degreaser and scrubbing to make it look better. Um, here's a couple of shots before. I mean, I, I had to clean some off already, so this is like maybe 30% of what was on there before. Some of you are probably wondering, uh, you saw something in the garage in the shot just a moment ago. Uh, so here it is. Dun, 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 dun. It's another Zuma. Look at that. Ooh, wee, ooh, wee. So, I picked up another Zuma for really cheap, and uh, it was really cheap, and it seems to have issues in the carb. Can't really see it from my camera shot, but it had some issues with the carb, cleaned the carb out, and then I discovered, I think the, the pet cock on here is messed up, so it's not delivering fuel but it's in pretty good condition and it happens to be the exact same year of the one that I as same as the one that I own already and I I lost my uh, my tripod mount for my phone so I have to use my gimbal and the gimbal runs on batteries so we'll see how long I can take stuff apart with this on there but I'm gonna go ahead and start taking apart the motor um, and uh, we'll see how that goes uh, let me go kind of give you a show of what I've got so far. So what I have is the Athena race kit and it does come with a new head and or that's a valve cover I guess not a valve cover. Uh, hit this and someone told me because this exhaust port isn't split that means it's the sport so there you go with that I mean it's not sport the race um, I got a new wrist pin for the piston it's a little bearing new gaskets which there's a whole ton of them here so I got to figure out which one goes where uh, new carbon fiber reeds which they're polka dotted. That's pretty. And a piston and a cool Athena sticker, which I will mount somewhere eventually. So I watched some videos um, from uh, Rolling Wrench was the one because they used a jog motor just like what I have here. And uh, I was able to kind of get a good idea of what I need to be able to do. So... Let's go ahead and start taking apart the old block, the old head, and uh, install it. Oh, yeah, here's the carb, too. Here's the, the carb. The carb is so tiny compared to the ruckus. Anyways, this needs to be cleaned, too, but that'll be later on. So let's go ahead and start taking apart the, uh, let's go ahead and start taking apart the motor. All right, 10 millimeter bolts, take this off. And let's start trying to figure out how to get all this apart. Uh, hopefully it's not super dirty, but let's see. All 
Okay, so the pin in here, or the clip is different than from the video. So I'm gonna have to do some research to figure out how this particular clip comes out and gets installed. So give me a minute to do some research and I'll be right back. All right, I got it figured out. Here's the, here's the pin, the clip. It's just a C clip, not a G clip. So I wasn't sure if I was allowed to squeeze this and I checked in the new package and it does come with G1, G size clips for this also. So I took it out, put a uh, wrench in here to help push the, the, the pin out. Here, this way. Yep, there we go. And there, folks, is a 50cc piston. Look at that. It's like the size of a Dixie cup, like that you use for mouthwash or something. It's kind of gross looking, but okay, it's a part. There is this also, which I'm going to replace. Everyone told me to go ahead and replace this while I'm at it since, uh, get a good one in here since I'm changing to a larger bore. So let's go ahead and get the new parts and I'll be right back. So first I'm going to do the wrist pin and I got myself some assembly lube. So I'm going to go ahead and put assembly lube all over this and in here. And put that in there. Here is the new piston. Got to put the piston ring on. Uh, notice that this the size difference between the two much larger and then this one has one piston ring while the other one had two so yeah okay here's the piston ring and the piston there's a dot by the way I'd like to say thank you to Matt Burton from uh, rolling wrench he kind of I asked him some questions about this and it gave me a lot of advice. So this is the ring. Put it around. There you go. And then this circle, the arrow should be pointing down. Go ahead. Yeah. I think it also came with a new. Uh, I forgot what this is called, but whatever it is, it's new. Gross. Kind of looks like some kind of candy. It's disgusting. Okay. Here are the new clips. I told you they were called G clips for a single reason that they look like a G. I got two GGs. So basically someone's telling me good game. Muhohohoho. Okay, so let's go ahead and put these in. I'll put this other side first, so then I'll push the pin the rest of the way. So it's blocked. But the cool thing about the G's is that it's like that. It's easy to put in. So or at least they say it's easy to put in. I personally have not put one in yet, but <laughs> let's give it a shot. Oh shoot, I put it in upside down. Okay, back to the G clips. All right, it was a pain to get the it was a 
All right, it was a pain to get those wrist pin, that, those little clips in, those G clips. But now, here's my problem. I obviously have way more gaskets than one I started off with. So, here's the, it's like they're shims almost. It's like there's whole bunches of them. One, two, three, four. And there's one with both sides. Oh no, same thing. Super skinny though. And then an actual gasket. Obviously this is the exhaust gasket. The, the exhaust. Uh, manifold and I believe this is the gasket that goes to the to the head to the head and then this rubber part right here I don't know where in the world it goes because it doesn't have a place to put it okay while I'm waiting for backup on this uh, on as far as the the zillion gaskets they give me I went ahead and took off the intake manifold right here which connects to the carb that has the reed valve on here and if you look the reeds here are what stainless yeah stainless steel sheets I'm gonna go ahead and take these off and replace them with those carbon fiber ones that should give me a little bit better performance and a little bit more flexibility on this what this does is whenever there's a compression stroke and uh, the air can't get out uh, and lose pressure and then but when air is coming in from this direction it can open up and breathe in it just can't breathe out so basically it's like a, a one-way valve or uh, kind of like a, uh, just a one-way valve so I'm gonna go ahead and change that real quick. Okay, so before I install, I wanted to show, this is the stainless steel one. Um, it's much stiffer, um, still has that rigidity for whenever you want it, but it doesn't have that flexibility to let more air in. Now with the carbon fiber one, it is just as rigid, um, but it also has better flexibility to let more air in for better throttle response. So, we'll go ahead and install that onto here, as opposed to the one on the other side, and uh, we'll get that put back in. All right, now that I got this back on, I got the gasket in here. I've been assembly lubing the inside of the cylinder, and I'm gonna put some on the actual piston. Then the exhaust faces down. Get the, gotta compress the, the ring. Okay, this obviously isn't going to be easy to do. There we go. I guess it's easier than I thought it would be. Everything's moving nicely. Like that. Right? It looked like on the old one. Yeah. Okay. I was told to put copper gasket seal on here too, so I'm gonna do it because that's what everyone tells me to do. I'm gonna spray some more. 
Sorry, the phone died, and uh, I couldn't get any more recording. I had to charge it real quick, so I just took a break. I'm kind of at an impasse right now. There's this orange ring, and I've seen it, like, here on other heads, but I don't know where in the world this goes. Uh, it, I mean, if you look, it, it doesn't go here. There's nothing that it can go on here and nothing here and i'm pretty sure it's not on the the bottom half here so i'm trying to to source out to see if i can find out i'm asking 49 cc scoot and uh matt from rolling wrench so give me a minute to find the research on this and we'll be back okay well i went ahead and put it on with the gasket and the copper uh gasket sealer uh, torqued it down to 10 foot-pounds in the spark plug, which I never do. Torqued that down to 14. Uh, and I got some good compression. The only thing I'm worried about is these reeds. Um, I don't feel like they were flush enough, but we'll see. I'm going to let this sit. Um, I'm probably going to go ahead and start, gonna start trying to put this uh, clean up in the area around here because it's super messy, super messy, super messy. Uh, and then arrange this back into the garage where tomorrow we can go ahead and put the motor back in. Actually, you know what? Uh, let me put all the covers on real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, I got the shrouds back on. Cleaned it up as best I could. It looks way better than it did before if you look at it from the total view of the motor cleared out a lot of that gunk and black I, it looked like there was sand and oil all in here and this is all clean again uh, so that means I can put the exhaust back on and then I can wheel this into the garage once I have it wheeled back into the garage I can set it back in and probably go ahead and get the uh, the mount shaft on there together and the shock and that's probably where I'm gonna go ahead and end it. Uh, tomorrow I can finish putting the carb and everything else back in and we can get uh, day two of this, but I really need to clean this up because it's getting late in, the even, uh, late in the day and I need to make sure that I have time to finish editing and all sorts of other stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead into here, call this day one. Tomorrow will be day two when I put it in and we go do a test uh, starting it up. Anyways, thank you for watching. Hope you liked what I'm doing. If I did anything wrong, please go ahead and post something because I'll see this tomorrow before I actually start working, start putting it back in the bike. So anyways, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, scootertuning.ca and Matt Burton from Rolling Wrench and uh, 49cc Scoot, uh, the forums for uh, the advice that they've given me. Anyways, I'll see you tomorrow.